and thank you for joining this episode of Tiger's Bites, the shorter format review and preview show of all things Glasgow Tigers. I'm Derek Smith, currently on my holly bags in far, far Tenerife, and helping me to talk all things Tigers in a far away location, for me at least, is the man who would walk 500 miles to Ashfield Stadium every Saturday or Sunday, Brian Copeland. Hello, Brian. Good evening, Derek. Uh, you're just showing off there by telling us where you all are. You could have said you were in your, your living room or something like that. Um, unfortunately, I'm only in Dundee, so not quite as glamorous. <laughs> well, I, I probably am perspiring a little bit, Brian. I wouldn't want anyone to be dialing uh, for me or something like that. Yeah, so we're going to uh, have a quick look back at um, the weekend's action, and we're also going to take in a little bit of a preview of uh, this weekend's Double header against Berwick, I believe. Um, and Derek, uh, I think you were there. Unfortunately, I couldn't make Saturday night. But um, a good home win against uh, against Newcastle, a fairly tough fixture, and we we saw them off with a uh, plum. We did, Brian. You know, we spoke to Stuart Dixon on Tigers Bites last week, and Stuart fully expected a, a stern test by the Diamonds on Saturday. And uh, through my eyes, at least, I don't think that stern test truly arrived. Yes. They had a, a, some rear guard action you know, by Steve Worrell and Robert Lambert in particular. But uh, the Tigers weren't really under pressure at any stage. And we always had enough in the bag to make sure the three points came to Ashfield. Yeah, and I, and I believe we've got a bit of action to, to look back on as well from Heat 5. Yes, Nike Luna was probably the standout rider in the home camp on, on Saturday night. 11 points uh, from his four rides. And uh, Heat 5, which we look at now, he joins Steve Worrell up against Robert Lambert. Morris, Worrell, Lambert and Luna is the lineup. Away we go. Good start by the Glasgow pairing. Richie Worrell will take the lead on the inside of Luna, around the outside of Rob Lambert. And Glasgow first and second as they head into the back straight for the first time. A surprise here in Heat number 5. Lambert goes to the outside, but it's Luna. Luna who gets clear in blue. Something of a surprise here in heat five. Lambert now goes for the inside. Worrell goes on to his favoured higher line. He manages to block Rob Lambert as they go down the back straight. Lambert now switches line to the outside. Breezes through on the outside. He's got second place now. Going after Nico Luna. First from the back by Rob Lambert here. Can he catch the fin? He's closing right up on him as they go down the back straight. Has a look to the inside side by side as they go into turn three. This is the best race of the day so far. Still leading the way is Nika Luna in blue. Lambert again to the inside, but Luna finding grip on the outside. It's a great defensive ride by Nika Luna. Keep the keep up his unbeaten run by a Newcastle rider. Can Robert Lambert catch him around turn number four? No, he can't. That's an excellent ride. Well done, Nika Luna. That's a brilliant ride and a notable scalp to defeat uh, Robert Lambert there. He is very, very pleased indeed with that one. Robert Lambert quite stunned there. Third place goes to uh, Richie Worrell and Ashley Morris at the back. So that's a 4-2 to Glasgow. The Allied Tigers extend their lead to eight points. And Nika Luna is overjoyed. So are the Glasgow fans. Nika Luna thought he was going to do a donut. Then he pulls up to salute the Glasgow fans on the home straight. The Finn takes the win. What do you think of that, Brian? You weren't there on Saturday night, but Nike was on fire on Saturday. Yeah, brilliant! Some brilliant action there, and uh, great to see Nike really hitting the the season off with a bang. And um, I think we know all knew he was capable of uh, of big things, and he already has shown uh, signs of that. So fantastic to see him flying against such uh, tough opposition. And uh, I think if Nike can stay injury free and keep going the way he's going, I think we're in for a real treat from him this season. Absolutely, the smile was very much fixed on the the face of the little fin in the pits on Saturday night, but it certainly wasn't a one-man show in the Glasgow camp, and right through the, the riding order there was good points, contributions from, from, from everyone. Young Jack had a, had a spill, as you'll have read, Brian, and uh, had to withdraw from the meeting, and uh, we did manage to catch up with Jack, uh, which we'll a little, a little later in the show, but uh, he went on, on to ride for the Tigers at Scunthorpe on Sunday, and uh, progress through the under-21 round just last night. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I think uh, 10 points he, he managed to score. Uh, two wins included in that. And I think, I believe he had the fastest time of the night in Heat 1 down at Peterborough. So a fantastic showing from Jack, uh, managing to qualify for the, the, the British under-21 final against some fairly uh, fairly tough opposition. I know that uh, the likes of James Shanes was there on the night. He's uh, really... 
been on fire for pool in the top league recently. Uh, so great experience for Jack and, and fantastic to see him through to join Dan Dooley uh, and the likes of Robert Lambert, as was mentioned uh, at that meeting in a couple of weeks' time down at pool. Absolutely. And it says a lot about young Jack and his attitude to racing and his commitment, indeed, that he picked himself up after the spill on Saturday night. He, he piled into the, the kickboards off the fourth turn with, uh, with some force and you know, obviously he was a little bit shaken on, on Saturday night. Uh, in fact, let's, let's cut to, uh, to the interview with Jack just now where he was assuring us that he was fit and he would ride at Scunthorpe the following day. Yep, I'm delighted to be joined in the Glasgow pits by Jack Smith. Jack, first and foremost, tell us how you are, please. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, an unfortunate what happened when I went in the bend. I uh, got too much grip, but in the first heat, I had a problem with my bike. It was misfiring and it wouldn't come out the start. And then every time I hit some dirt, like it would happen and the bike wasn't, I didn't feel comfortable on the bike at all. And dad, dad tried to fix the problem. We changed the ignition going into the next one, but the same problem was still there. And and that's pretty much what I put it down to with the, with the misfire and hitting the dirt. It, the bike just took off and I couldn't really control it. So, but you know, I'm all right. And I'll be there tomorrow at Scunthorpe and just, you know, see how tomorrow goes. So as long as you wake up tomorrow and you feel bright and breezy, declare yourself fit to race at Scunthorpe. Well, yeah, I already know now I want to ride. Like, I'm, I am sore at the moment, and I'll probably be sore when I wake up tomorrow. But you know, you got nothing's broken. I know that, and you got to ride for the pain, aren't you? So, tell us if you don't mind about your week. You've, you've had quite a busy week uh, racing around the country. What's your what's your highlights? Pick out some of the the, the memories. I I know you had a your first heat win in Bellevue Colours and you beat a rather big name around uh, the new Bellevue track yesterday. Yeah, it's been a busy week. I had press and practice on Monday at Bellevue and uh, that, that went well. And then on, then on Wednesday, I was down at Poole for the first leg of the Knockout Cup and it, it didn't go too well down there, but I was on the pace and that. And, you know, I, uh, I didn't pick any points up that day, but then, then I, you know, I moved on to, to Swindon for the first league match and uh, I, I managed to win it too, made a good start. and. I just rode a really good steady race and and the rest of the night didn't go too well but I was still still making starts for everyone and, and I was on the pace for everyone. I, I enjoyed the, the pool track and the swimming track and then obviously I made my uh, home debut at, at Bellevue uh, last night and and that went that went well as well. Uh, you know I, I, I managed to, to get a point in heat too which which I was disappointed I didn't get the 5-1 with Dan but that happens but you know, we made some uh, changes to the bike because it didn't come out the start in heat two and heat four. I made a, I made a really good start and got in front, of, got in front of Hans Anderson and rode the line he wanted and managed to managed to get a five one with Craig. So it, it was a really good night that night. So fantastic stuff. Did you sleep? Did you sleep well last night? <laughs> yeah, I was I was buzzing off it all night and and still today. Uh, you know, I thought the confidence of that that you know beat, beating Hans would have brought me into tonight you know in high hopes but I don't know tonight just didn't go go my way and I was you know I think quite tired as well after the week I've had been quite busy but you know once once the season gets gets going uh, I'll, I'll I'll be getting fitter and stronger so tonight's gone Jack let, let, let it go look forward only um, get yourself off to bed early tonight and hopefully you wake up tomorrow and you feel a whole lot brighter and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in action very very soon in Tigers colours yeah cheers I'll, I'll forget about tonight you know and, 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 and just aim on like scoring points tomorrow and I've been to Scunthorpe before and scored a load of points so I'm looking forward to it thanks for taking time out to talk to us Jack right, cheers no problem thanks I mentioned um, in opposition on Saturday night that uh, there was two standouts, I guess, in the Diamonds camp, and no surprises that that was Steve Worrell and uh, Robert Lambert, respectively, and they did, they did cause us some trouble, and, and Stuart Dixon had identified both in last week's preview show. Yeah, he had uh, Steve Worrell in particular, I think a huge points haul from him. He really, he really likes Ashfield, I think. There's always been a, a suggestion that he might join Richie one day up at Ashfield. Didn't quite happen this season, but you know, I think if that were to ever happen, we'd be in for a, 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 fun, a sort of real treat, to be honest. I think those two around Ashfield would be fairly unbeatable, but unfortunately he's up against us this season, so we'll just have to, to try and deal with them in the way that we can. But considering the, the points haul that he did put in on Saturday night, um, you know, we did. I think we did very well to, to win by the margin that we, we still did. 
Steve was absolutely the, the standout uh, in in the meeting on Saturday night. And I spoke to him before the meeting, and as you say, Brian, he uh, he he was looking for he'd just done the track walk at the time, and he was really looking forward to getting to grips with the Ashfield circuit. Okay, I'm joined in the Ashfield pits by the good-looking Steve Wall, yeah, the handsome brother of uh, of Richie, of course. Who's the eldest, by the way? Who's the big brother? Richie, two minutes. He's two minutes old. He looks it as well, doesn't he? He does. He looks like <laughs> So, Steve, um, the season in its early weeks, of course, but uh, a busy boy already with uh, Newcastle and Bellevue. And looking at your scores, everything seems to be going well for you. It has. It's um, I've basically not been on for two weeks, to be honest. We, we was out in Poland for a week and then obviously come back and it's been non-stop since. But it's good. It's, it's the way I want to start the season. The way everyone's still a bit rusty and, and I'm ready to go. Um... And it started off really well. I'm I'm happy with how 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 it's all going so far. So I'm looking forward to to carrying it all on. Good. Look at your scores purely for Newcastle. So three three meetings in diamonds unbeaten currently, and uh, double figure scores for yourself. Um, in terms of your prep for this season, have you changed much behind the scenes in terms of your pit screw equipment, etc.? Uh, equipment's the same. Um, I invested more money into more equipment. Obviously, it's it's hard work. Like. I've not been home for I don't know how long, and um, you're just trying to carry all the, all the things around with you. You, know, you, have, you have to have three bikes and everything else. It, it's uh, you, if you're going to do it, you're going to you got to do it right, and that's that's the view I had on it this winter. So I spent money and in, invested in equipment, um, employ now a full time mechanic just to just to take a bit of stress f from myself. I can chill out a bit more and the pressure's on him basically to get the bikes ready. My job's to just race, and and I think that's. Um, Moving forward, that's the, the right direction. Uh, worked hard on my fitness, so um, now I was fit last year, and uh, right at this moment now I'm probably a lot fitter than I was last year, just through working with a well closely with a trainer who actually knows what he's talking about, rather than me just going to the gym and pounding away. You know, it's you work on the areas that are your weaknesses. So um, personally, it's I'm, I'm in the best shape I can be. So to, you know, no pain, no gain sounds to be a, a, a true adage then. But for, for a speedway rider, just give us some insight. What, what, what do you work on? Is it all round fitness? Is it upper body strength in particular? What 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 uh, what Steve Warrell has to work on? Uh, I don't want to let any secrets out. No, now it's um, we work at maximum maximum. Well, it's it's hard work for one minute basically. So there's no point going out running a marathon because that's not what we do. It's um, like. Usain Bolt can't run a marathon, but Mo Farah can't run 100 metres. Like that, you, you train for your sport. So it's like majority of things I do, I try to, to work as hard as I can for just over a minute because at the longest, the speedway race is like 65 seconds at the most. So like if, if I know I can work at maximum flat out for 65 seconds, then out on the track will be a breeze. Ashfield, of course, a track that you've, you've ridden many times. You've just done the track walk. Tell us uh, what, what, you, what you found out there. I think it looks perfect. Um, I know some of the Glasgow boys have been moaning it was a bit slick last week, but uh, it looks it looks nice to me, so I think it would create some good racing. Good. Well, Steve, thanks for taking time out to talk to us. Best of luck for the rest of the season. No doubt we'll catch up with you at some point. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in action later. No problem. Steve Warrell in good form, uh, just just like his brother Richard. They've got a wicked sense of humour, those two, and it's, it's always a joy to have a chat to those guys. Yeah, Steve's great. Uh, him and Richie, they're good characters for the sport. And um, it's, you know, from, from a British perspective, it's great to see both of them really progressing uh, over the last couple of seasons. And, you know, if, if they keep going the way they're going, there's no reason why they can't uh, go on to bigger and better things. I know that both are looking to ride more in Poland this season. I believe both were across there recently to, to sign for a club. Uh, I think it's in the third tier over there. So uh, they're, they're really taking their sport seriously. And, um, yes, yeah, Steve's, Steve's a nice guy. Um, not quite as nice as his brother Richie, though. <laughs> so at the end of Saturday night, three points banked in the championship for the Tigers, and all roads led down to East Lincolnshire for uh, the, a, a trip to Scunthorpe, a track which we haven't always particularly performed well at, Brian, and uh, we did fell short again on Sunday. Yeah, I know Stuart beforehand was being keeping his cards quite close to his chest. I think he said that anything we got down there would be a bonus. When I spoke to him immediately after the meeting, he was he was quite a, a frustrated figure. I think he, he felt that given the, the injury to Fritz Warner down at reserve for, for Scunthorpe and uh, one or two other things, you know, Ryan Douglas had been out with food poisoning and, and just returned. I think he felt that we should really have, have taken something, particularly going into the, the latter stages of the meeting ahead, which is usually our strongest point. And um, unfortunately, I just didn't 
things just didn't go our way in the last uh, last few heats. And I know I spoke to Aaron Aaron Summers yesterday as well, and he was similarly frustrated. He admitted that he'd made one or two uh, errors, I think, in heat 13 itself. Uh, Josh Ottig sort of passing him on the line. Um, to, to get the points there, and but he, he did it. You know, he wasn't being too downbeat about it. I think he, you know conceded that it is early in the season. It's only our first away meeting. So, um, although Stuart was frustrated, I'm sure that you know in hindsight he'll look back and say we've we've taken a point. You know, at least it's a a start to our, our building away from home. And you know, if we go back there later in the season with the same team, a bit more settled, then you would expect us to, to perhaps push them further. It's an interesting one, isn't it, Brian? Because uh, you either fall into the camp of glass half full or glass half empty, and a lot of Glasgow supporters, I think, have, you know, aired their frustrations. I guess that uh, that, that that was a match that we probably ought to have and, and should have won, but uh, you know, Scunthorpe, on their own circuit, have proven time and time again that they that they're a match for most sides uh, around the uh, around their home base. Yeah, exactly. And I think, given our two reserves are still getting settled in, I know that, that Tom Perry had quite a frustrating weekend with, with uh, bike problems and things like that. Obviously, Jack had his spill on Saturday night, so maybe it wasn't quite 100%. And I think they only managed a few points between them on, on Sunday. So, you know, you, you look at that, if, if those guys manage to get one or two more points, you know, the match starts to swing in the other direction. So, um, a, frustrate, a frustrating night for some, I'm sure. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decent start to our away meetings. And, you know, there, there won't be too many teams, uh, I don't think, that will go there this season and win, particularly as Stuart has predicted, if they, they strengthen up. It's a decent start, Brian, and it's exceptionally early season. And remember that we're going to have to visit Scunthorpe again later in the year. Uh, you know, we're going to meet every team in the Championship uh, twice, home and away, in, in league action this season. And uh, too early, I think, to be pressing any uh, any panic buttons over one result. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a big chance this weekend to, to make amends. We're, you know, we're going to, to face a side to, uh, you know, have been, haven't had the best of the starts, have struggled a little bit to, to get um, to get going uh, so far this season. Um, and, you know, a big chance this weekend away to Berwick to, to go, and, go and really sort of show what we're, we're made of. I think we must fancy our chances. It's a circuit that we've done pretty well in, in recent seasons at least. Uh, Richie finished on the podium in the 50th anniversary meeting down at Shieldfield just a, a month or so ago. And uh, it's, it's a track, perhaps with the exception of, of Jack, that uh, all our riders should be well acquainted with. Tom Berry rode with Berwick just last season. Yeah, Tom could be a real trump card down there. I know like Sir Richard Lawson, obviously Adam Summers goes well there as well. I'm sure Nike will like the, the track down there, um, given his style. So. You look at you're looking at five or six of our guys who you think should should go pretty well around there. I don't know how Dan um, particularly likes that track or otherwise, but he's not afraid to wind it on. Um, and he, he will have had experience of racing at Berwick last season as well. So it's a, it's a real big opportunity. Uh, I think Berwick are still trying to find their feet. You know, I think the likes of Lewis Bridger at number one hasn't quite you know been an out and out one number one for them yet. One one day it will click for them, and, and hopefully that's not this weekend. But you know, given that given our guys have started the season in decent form, I think this is a, a real big opportunity. And you know, you you'll be you'll be looking. I think Stu will be looking to to go down there and 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 win and maybe put in quite a convincing performance as well. Interest, Brian. You mentioned that the bandits haven't quite caught fire yet, and that's a point not lost on bandits team boss Gary Havelock, who I caught up with a little earlier. OK, let's look ahead to this bank holiday Easter weekend where we have Berwick Glasgow home and away this weekend, both teams chasing championship points in the early part of the season. And I'm delighted to be joined on the line now by former world champion and Berwick Bandits team boss, Gary Havelock. Good evening, Gary. How are you doing? Very good, Gary. Gary, let's uh, turn the Well, before we, before we look at the Glasgow Berwick fixtures this weekend, um, let, let's turn the clock back a little bit. So you're uh, the new boy in town uh, in Chilfield Park this season. And yes. uh, Scott, Scott and Jamie and all the other guys seem to have created a very buoyant, a very upbeat, a very positive atmosphere around, around the town, never mind around the club. That must be pleasant for you to, to step right into this, this season. Yeah, it's excellent. You know, I think um, all through my riding career, you know, for one, I never really ever thought I'd be a team manager for two. I never, never, ever, ever in a million years thought I'd be a 
a promoter, although officially I'm not a promoter at the moment, but um, I'm uh, a partner in, in running a club. Um, and, you know, it's a learning curve for me, really steep learning curve, because, I, you know, I've never been in business before. And, uh, you know, obviously now we're running a business. And um, I think there's probably could have counted on one hand uh, the amount of people that are in this life that I would actually think about going into business with. And uh, Scott and Jamie are two of them. You know, I've known them both since they were a day old and um, <laughs> you know I think between us we've got over 100 years of speedway experience <laughs> every day is a school, a school day Gary mm, and of course the, 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 Courtney, the Courtney family of course are, are very well known to uh, to Glasgow fans with Mark and, and yeah, Uncle yeah. Sean back in the day Uncle Sean yeah totally um, I remember going up riding at um, the last place was at Shawfield wasn't it yes that's right yeah, at Shawfield, where when Sean was riding for them, and uh, in the days of Shane Bowes and and people like that, um, you know. So, yeah, I think uh, that the, the the Courtney family in general were up in in you know, Berwick and Glasgow. Um, yeah, you like to say, you know, um, even Mark's on the phone to me like twice a week from Poland. You know, it's it, it's a whole thing, and um, we're trying to run it like a business. You know, not not not. There's so many speedway tracks you see, and people are just running it, just playing at it. Might be, yep. uh, you know, they might have successful business, and it's just a, a tax loss or whatever. And, but you look at somebody like Matt Ford at Poe, and that is his main business, and that's what that's the, yes. mo- the model we're trying to copy. You know, we're trying to actually make it a, a, a viable business to to stand upon its own and run. Um, and Scott's done an absolutely stellar mm. job pre-season, you know, getting out mm. and around in the community, finding sponsors, talking to people, getting the buzz going, promoting the sport. And, um, you know, our crowds um, have been sensational, really, compared to what Berwick have been having in, in past seasons. We did a lot of our figures on Berwick's past average crowd, uh, and we know that we could sustain it at that, but, you know, our crowd levels have been over and above. I think the lowest one was Ipswich. When we were already out, we were already out the cup. Of course, uh, basically because we got thrashed at their place. Um, <laughs> no Ipswich fans, and it was pouring down with rain everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we still got about 750 people, which you know, we're, we're really Excellent. really pleased with. But um, unfortunately, the one thing that will start to wean your crowd down is losing home matches. And uh, you know, we lost against Edinburgh uh, last weekend, and uh, obviously it's going to be a tough one. This Saturday against your mob, so you know the boys know exactly where they stand. We got to start winning. Let's just just before we preview Glasgow's visit this weekend, Gary. Yeah. So yeah. you've had a you, you've had three, I think, three home meetings. I, I believe this season, if, if you don't count the the fiftieth uh, anniversary meeting. Am yes, I right? we have. Yeah, we had three team yeah. three it's, team meetings. Yeah. And you're right. So you, you, you've you've alluded to the, the, the former at the moment. And yes, it's very early season. Yes, there's some new faces around the club. But uh, <laughs> cheers, Gary. <laughs> but but you're right. You know when there's when there's a when there's when you're running it as a business and you're dependent on a certain level of attendance and, and wishing to grow that. Obviously, the spoiler is the results on track. So I I, I know I, I've got a few Beric. Uh, friends, and they've told me that the, the entertainment, the show, the racing have been superb this season, which is fantastic. But results do count. It's a results-driven business, Gary, isn't it? it without a doubt, it's a results-based business. You know, I think if um, if you, you know, your fans, they're not really bothered what happens down the other end of the country on a Thursday night. So much they might look at the updates, but, you know, when they get up fire them on and go to work, it doesn't really affect them. But what does affect them is Losing at home on a Saturday night, especially if it's to Edinburgh, Glasgow, or Newcastle, you know, um, and then they've got to go work all week and, and and be miserable. And you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that if you keep losing at home, your know, crowds are going to dwindle away. You know, they're going to say, "Oh, same old Berwick, same old this." Um, so it's a, it's a slump that we have to put a halt to and fast. Gary, I've attributable to you in the Speedway Press uh, in the past week or two, and you've talked about the gating within the, the bandit side has not been up to scratch. Is, is that alone something that the results for the bandit? 
Um, yeah, for sure. Um, like I was just saying, I think back in the back in the uh, late eighties and early nineties, when I was captain of Bradford, uh, I always used to tell my young lads who was coming to the team that getting is seventy five percent of the sport. Uh, but actually now, downs are and the way the tyres are uh, and and the way the tracks are, I think it's probably closer to ninety. Uh, in this day and age, and um, you know, if, if if you make four starts every meet, even if you get past two or three times, you're still gonna have a nine point average. And uh, it, it's it really is so important. And um, mm-hmm. you know, for some reason, I don't know what it is, um, but it, it, it's a disease that spread through the team. And as a, as a unit, we just we just struggling to make starts. So. Let's talk about this weekend. So the Tigers are coming to town on Saturday night. I'm sure there'll be lots of Glasgow fans will make the journey down to, to Shieldfield as well to, to back the, Come the on side. Down, the Come on down. Come on down. So what uh, what does Gary Havelock do between now and Saturday night to uh, to get the bandit side fired up to repel the Tigers visit? Oh, well, the main thing I'm doing probably most of tonight and all day tomorrow is trying to find two-point guests to Friday, Saturday and Sunday. There's a Friday, there's a... You're at Armadale on Friday, Gary, yeah? Yeah, yeah, there's 10 matches on on Friday night. Um, Saturday and Sunday, not so many, but still, it's difficult to find two-point guests who are willing yeah. to come come up north uh, um, for the weekend. So, um, rather, rather than talking so much to the team, I will be uh, trying to get a guest sorted, but... Um, the boys know the know the Scott. Um, we had a team meeting after last Saturday night in the pit in the changing room, and uh, we've been speaking all week on our group chat. And um, they are under no illusion that we need to start making some starts. The, the, the boys have been around the block, Gary. They're an experienced side that you've that you've put together by and large. And uh, can I ask a question? And I'm not I'm not singling anyone out to, other than to ask for some insight in terms of his thoughts on the. The championship so far is Lewis Bridger. I think it, it uh, made a lot of people sit up and pay attention when the bandits announced Lewis as their number one this mm-hmm. season. And it's mm-hmm. a delight to see Lewis, uh, you know, a new rider in, in, at championship level. Has he yeah. been surprised? Uh, I wouldn't say he's been surprised. Um, one of my biggest concerns was... Uh, uh, Scott Courtney ringing me in the middle of a big in- interview. Uh, <laughs> um, the, he, because he, he, he rides for the Revolution Speedway team, which uh, yeah. they're fac- it's a factory Jawa team. And that was probably my mm. biggest concern, was the fact that he was on Jawas. But um, honestly, I would say that Lewis has been on the pace everywhere we've been. He just hasn't made a start. It's not one start all season. And... Um, some of his rides from the back on Saturday night around Sheffield were nothing short of sensational. He passed both the Wrist Brothers in one race, went wide and cut back on the on the first one, and then went all the way around the outside of the second one on turns three and four. Um, and you know, I, so, so, I, I think Matt, one one of my concerns that so, yeah. uh, he was riding Jowers, you know, it, it, it's not a concern for me anymore. Um, um, Lewis is got as much talent as uh, as anybody riding in this country in, in, with English blood in their veins. He really does. And, um, you know, he's been here, there and everywhere and retired and come back and retired again. And, and, and you, hopefully you, he can find a home here at Berwick and, and, and feel that he's somebody who's, who's you know, who's the number one and, and, and he's a leader of the team. He needs to lead the team. Um, and... I'm sure as soon as he starts making some starts, he's going to be a very hard man to beat. Thanks, Gary. It's early season. I think you know everyone must uh, bear that in mind. It's the early weeks of what will be a long, long championship chase this season. Gary, the home and away matches against Glasgow this week- weekend, your first chance as a team boss at championship level to lock horns with Stuart Dixon. You looking forward to I, that? <laughs> I am, yeah. Uh, I know one thing for sure. I'm... Uh, no more about technology than he does. <laughs> I, I, I all I did was, no, was press a couple of buttons and I was on. <laughs> anyway, nah, Stuart's a good guy. He's a great guy. I get on well with Stuart. And, um, 
yeah, you know, there's um, he knows the rule book inside out, and uh, I, I'm sure he'll have a trick or two up his sleeve if needed. But um, you know, I just want to want to go out there and and and. and you know, give good speed away to, to the fans. Um, yeah. You know, both yeah. both legs. At the end of the day, it's it's a fan driven sport, as as all sports are. And um, you know, if you can get people through the gate and they can leave going wow, mm-hmm. then they got they go and come back. Uh, and you know that, that that's what I know. Uh, Glasgow, you've been been working hard on on everything. Also, back, you know, mainly Scott preseason. We've been working really hard on on all all the all that side of the stuff, and you know, we we've been getting good crowds so far. Mm-hmm. Gary, um, so where, where, where's my head? Yeah, up in up in this part of the country. I'm in I'm in holidays, you know, at the moment, but I'm speaking mm-hmm. with my Glasgow hat on. So in that part okay. of the world, in, in in that part of the world, we like to think that our side is uh, a cut above the rest, and you know, we've got lots of faith in. The, the way that Stuart's lined up the the, the one to seven this season, we've got some lots of experience in there, and I've got some talented youth as well. And you know, we, we're coming to Sheffield on Saturday night, looking to turn you boys over. You you would ex- expect me to say that. And on Sunday, of course, we would like to send you home pointless. But presumably, you have a completely <laughs> a completely opposite uh, perspective on both those meetings. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> I guess if I didn't, I shouldn't be the boss, but. Um, exactly. Yeah, look, we're under no illusions at, at Berwick that um, it's going to get any easier. You know, we've had matches against Ipswich, Sheffield, Newcastle, um, home and away, and uh, we've raced some top top teams so far. And um, you know, on almost every occasion, we've come out second best. And again, a hard back to the gates, but you can't. You know, you can you can you can give a, a riders in the average team. A, a, a start out the gate and maybe catch them and pass them. But when you're talking of top teams, the likes of yourselves, Edinburgh, Ipswich, people like that, um, mm. you just can't give them 10 yards head start and expect to win races. Yeah. And if you don't win races, you don't win matches. So, um, yeah, we, you know, we're, we're primarily looking towards our home leg on Saturday. And, um, you know, if we can win that, um, we can then move on to Sunday and uh, see what we can do. There's lots of Glasgow fans, and I'm one of them who've got a, a very the band that's and always have had. And uh, other than this weekend, I guess you know, we we wish you the the best of luck for the season ahead, Gary. Thank you very much. Yes, this Gary, passion, but but very honest as well. You, Gary, uh, readily admits that the bandits haven't quite taken off just yet. Yeah, and I think I saw something from him earlier in the week, uh, some comments he'd made after one of their, their meetings at the weekend, obviously they, they were beaten at home by Edinburgh and, and um, went to Sheffield as well and didn't perform particularly well, and I think he was really quite frustrated, I think he was uh, he's getting the bleep machine out at one point, so um, given the, his, his feelings, so um, but Gary, Gary will know himself that you know he's got to give his team a little bit of time to, to settle down and you know before they can start looking at it, making you know, any drastic changes and um, you know, those guys in there, Dimitri Berger, Cloud, Cloud Swissing, these kind of guys are, are good, you know, good performers, proven performers at this level, and I'm sure once they kind of get get going a little bit, get dialed into the, the track, I'm sure I'm sure they'll be fine. Absolutely, I'm going to put you on the spot, Brian. This is something I think we should introduce on a weekly basis. How about some predictions of the <laughs> score lines on Saturday and Sunday? Let's 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 look at the trip to Berwick first of all. What do you what do you realistically realistically expect to happen, Brian? Oh, drop me right in it there, Derek. But uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I think I would be looking. I th- you know, based on form so far, I would say I think I think Berwick will start to pick up a little bit. Um, I would be looking at my prediction would be a forty-seven, forty-three win for Glasgow on Saturday. That doesn't sound wrong to me, Brian. I too suspect that Berwick might just do enough to 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 grab a home victory, but uh, a, a point in it at least. I think for the Tigers to bring back to Ashfield. However, on Sunday, I would fully expect that the Tigers will be on the ascendancy once again and send Bandits home pointless. Yeah, I think we'd be looking at sort of 18, 20 point gap on Sunday, to be honest. Maybe a sort of 55, 35 might be a, a, a sort of ballpark figure. Um, you know, you, we'll st- there's a few riders that go well around Ashfield uh, in, in the Berwick ranks, so we won't have it all our own way, I don't think. Um, you know, a couple of those guys have already been. And, uh, already this season, 
Um, but yeah, I think I think a comfortable fifty-five, thirty-five, one would would be what I would go for. That would do. So for you, Tigers fans who are making a trip down down the east coast to uh, Berwick upon Tweed on Saturday, have a safe trip and an enjoyable night, and cheer on the the red and white to hopefully so, to, to to some victory. And on Sunday, let's all reconvene at the Peugeot Ashfield Stadium. Tapes up at 3 p.m. And uh, hopefully the Tigers can claim another three championship points. Brian, any final thoughts? Yep. No, just a fantastic weekend the Speedway ahead. I think I'm really looking forward to it. And um, if you can get down to Berwick on Saturday night, back the, the boys for the first, hopefully the first away win of the season, and um, back up the road for a, a smashing afternoon on Easter Sunday, 3 p.m. at the Peugeot Ashwood Stadium. Thanks for joining us, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Tigers Bites, and we look forward to catching up with you again next week. Thank you. Good night. Good night.